Welcome back to the deep dive. Today, uh, we're really getting into the nuts and bolts of oil refining. We are. We've got this technical diagram in front of us showing regenerative catalytic reforming. Right. And our mission, really, is to figure out how this works. How do you take something basic like crude oil, or a fraction of it, and turn it into the high-octane gasoline you put in your car? It's a fascinating process. Honestly, it's all about rearranging molecules. You start with naphtha. Which is, well, less valuable on its own. Exactly. And you transform it through these steps into something much more useful, high-octane fuel. Okay, let's jump in. The diagram shows the feed is preheated naphtha mixed with hydrogen. And this hydrogen is recycled, it seems. Mm-hmm, yeah. The naphtha, it mentions, can be depentinized or dehexanized. What does that mean? practically, removing those bits. Well, yeah, think of naphtha as a mix. Removing the pentanes and hexanes, the really light molecules, helps the process focus on the slightly heavier ones. The ones you actually want to reform. Precisely. It makes the reforming, the octane boosting, more effective. And the hydrogen, that's crucial. Now so? Uh, it helps control the reactions, prevents unwanted side products like coke forming on the catalyst, and keeps that catalyst active for longer. It's recycled for efficiency. Got it. Okay, so this hot mix of naphtha and hydrogen, it flows into these fired heaters and then into reactors. It's like three of them in series. That's right, three fixed bed reactors, and they're running really hot. You mentioned the temperature. Yeah, 495 to 525 degrees Celsius. And pretty high pressure, too, 5 to 46 atmospheres. Why three reactors, though? Why not just one huge one? Good question. It's about control. Uh, the reactions are complex, some release heat, some need it. Staging allows for reheating in between. Ah, hence the fire heaters linked to each reactor. Exactly. You can fine tune the conditions in each reactor to optimize different parts of the reforming process. Maximize that high octane yield. And inside is the catalyst, the real magic ingredient here. The workhorse, definitely. It facilitates those molecular changes without getting used up itself, ideally. Speeding up the reactions we want. And speaking of reactions, this process doesn't just make gasoline components. It actually produces hydrogen, net hydrogen, it says. It does. That's a really important byproduct. The reactions that rearrange the hydrocarbons to boost octane often release hydrogen atoms. Which is then collected. Yep. It's separated out later, and that hydrogen is super valuable within the refinery. It gets used in other processes, like hydro-treating to remove sulfur, so it's a win-win. Okay. Efficiency. So, after the reactors... Things cool down quite a bit for the gas separator. Looks like 38 Celsius. Right. Big temperature drop. The separator's job is pretty straightforward. Just splitting gas from liquid. Basically, yeah. The hydrogen-rich gas gets pulled off the top. And recycled back to the start. We saw that. Mm -hmm. And the liquid hydrocarbon stream, that moves on to the next stage, which is the stabilizer column. The stabilizer. What's its role? It looks like a distillation column with a reboiler and condenser. It is, essentially. It's a final cleanup step for the liquid. It uses heat, usually steam or hot oil in the reboiler at the bottom. And cooling at the top with the condenser. To precisely separate out any remaining very light components, things like dissolved gases, maybe some LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. So you boil off the light stuff. You boil off the light stuff, condense it, and some is drawn off as off gas or LPG, the heavier liquid that remains at the bottom. That's your prize. The high-octane reformate, ready for gasoline blending. That's the stuff. And that reflux loop you see going back into the top of the stabilizer, wow. that just helps make the separation sharper, more efficient. Okay, so stepping back and looking at this whole flow diagram, regenerative catalytic reforming. Oh, yeah. What are the key takeaways for, you know, understanding how we get better gasoline? Well, first, I'd say it's a highly engineered multi-step process. You need that high temperature, high pressure, and the right catalyst working together. It's not simple chemistry. Not at all. Second, it's incredibly efficient. You're not just making the gasoline component, but also that valuable hydrogen. Third, the whole system is continuous, with recycling streams like the hydrogen to maximize the output. Right. Very little waste, hopefully. That's the goal. And finally, perhaps most critical, is the precise control needed over those reactor conditions. Temperature, pressure, flow rates, they all have to be just right to get the desired chemical changes. It really is an intricate dance, isn't it? Heat, pressure, catalysts. Yeah all working to rearrange molecules for something we use every day. Makes you appreciate what goes into filling up your tank. Absolutely. Next time you're at the pump, maybe you'll picture this journey, crude oil, fractionated, then reformed through a system like this one. It really prompts the question, what other everyday items rely on chemical engineering that's just as complex, just hidden from view?